My name is Jack Liang. I'm the organizer of this event. What do you, what's your day job? Yeah. So my day job is at Instagram. I'm a small business advisor for Facebook, a startup advisor for Facebook, and I'm an entrepreneur. Yeah. So tell me what inspired you to help organize this event. Yeah, I mean, I've experienced racism most of my life. Um, I've even had to leave to California to experience a different world where uh, I had to go heal. I had to go quarantine from the, the hate virus and just learn a little bit by myself. And then when I saw that these events were happening back in my hometown, uh, I wanted to come back and make sure we set things right and we set the tone for the rest of the country. Yeah. Share a little bit about where you grew up and how that affected your identity and your, mm -hmm. and your race. Your yeah, so I grew up in Brooklyn, New York, uh, born and raised. Um, we had 12 to 14 people in our household and it was tough, you know, uh, it was, wasn't a predominantly Asian American place to grow up. Um, and, you know, from an early age, I've experienced racism and I was taught to hold it in and not share those emotions, share those feelings and had no one to talk to, uh, almost to the point where, you know, I, I faced a lot of hate and I started becoming hate. So I want to make sure that doesn't happen to our community. I want to make sure that they are empowered, that they feel looked after and they're loved. Are your parents immigrants? What do they do for work? Yeah, so my parents are immigrants. They're retired now, but they used to work at a, my mom used to be a seamstress and my dad was a chef at a Chinese restaurant. You know, you're very local. Um, you know, it's a story that a lot of people don't talk about, you know, the New York City uh, upbringing for Asian Americans, um, you know, I grew up being raised by my grandparents, you know, so just to see that elders in this area are being attacked and targeted, it's extremely disgraceful, it's extremely heartbreaking, and we're here to stop that. Tell me some of the ways that you experience racism. What does that look like when someone doesn't understand? Yeah, so racism could look, you know, has many different faces, right? It could just be name calling, which I think most New York City, um, you know, pe most people from New York City are used to. We're used to the words. We're used to being called different names. We're kind of just numb to it. Uh, but there's a racism that's physical, and that's when we have to take action. That's when we know that this is not okay. This is affecting other people. And if we don't stand up and unite together, it's not going to change. Um, there's also obviously racism that's a little bit more pernicious. Mm -hmm. Harder to detect. Right. Talk about that. I'm sure you've dealt with it. Yeah, it's subtle. Um, people take it lightly. It's ju it's like a joke. It's more acceptable. It's kind of like our former president and the things he had to say. Um, and yeah, technically it's not like offensive, um, but it still gives permission to people to speak openly about it. And you know, it makes the people more uh, like it makes the people feel adapted to that type of language to use. And that's the status quo. It's people joking about racism, people making fun of it. Oh, but I'm not racist. I just say these things and that has to stop. That can't be the norm. And we need to change that today. You mentioned a little bit earlier, going to discover yourself. Yeah. What did you, what did you discover? Yeah, I discovered how much pain I was holding, uh, how much anger I was holding, how much anger I was carrying and how that was impacting the people around me. Um, it's like a virus. Hate is a virus and I was carrying that and I had to go quarantine. So, you know, I did the healing process and I had the resources to do it. But I don't think a lot of other people have the resources to do it. So now I'm here to teach what I've learned, to share my experiences and to unite the people and uplift the people. Do you think this issue of racism for Asian Americans, is this, is this new? Is it getting worse? What do yeah. you think? Oh, it's not new. Um, you know, being, uh, having a place in both the East Coast and the West Coast, we experience it differently, right? The East Coast, we walk out of our house in New York City especially, and we see thousands of people every day, in the bus, on the train. And we get called names and people say things and make comments all the time. And then the worst part is when we are actually assaulted and, and physically abused because of the way we look. In the West Coast, people drive, um, it's not as common, but in San Francisco, it's, it can be because it's also very dense. Uh, you know, it's just none of it is okay, and uh, we need to make a stop to it right now. Um, what are you expecting today? Have you been, are you 
excited about today? What kind of changes yeah. can happen? I'm so excited for today. It's the first time that all different types of races are coming together to acknowledge what's going to happen and what's been happening in the Asian American community. Um, it will be a unifying, empowering, and energizing experience. Uh, the whole world is watching, and we need to set the tone for the country. And are you optimistic? Do you think this is a turning point for Asian Americans in the United States? Oh, yeah. I'm optimistic. I think the future is bright. I think there's a lot of heavy lifting in the beginning, but it'll all pay off and it'll all be worth it. And there will be a future where our children can feel proud of the way they look. And finally, um, what are you expecting today? What is a successful today? A successful today is if thousands of people feel empowered, love the way they look, go bring that energy back to their communities and they be the light in their communities and they make sure they protect their communities. And we just want that. We don't want people to live in fear. And then I mean, we're gonna to talk to you later, but the floor is yours. What else do you think is important to have? I think it's important to respect each other, to celebrate each other. You know, in, in the United States, we still differentiate, like the Asian Americans still differentiate ourselves with, I'm Japanese, I'm Taiwanese, I'm South, like Asian, Chinese, whatever you are. In the US, we're all Asian American. And if we don't celebrate each other, if we don't love each other and we don't connect with each other, there's no way the outside world will so let's begin loving each other and respecting each other and just celebrating who we are.